Bushcraft. And I'm Justin Van Ferrari with Waypoint Outdoor Adventure. And I'm Mark from Rolling Olmstead. And this is the seven day Extreme Winter Challenge, Northern Wisconsin. Hey, what's going on everyone? Tollywood Bushcraft here. And uh, the seven day Extreme Winter Challenge has begun. We were on our first hike out there. This is beautiful. Let me tell you guys see what I'm looking at right now. Look at this beautiful lake. Just hidden in the back of this deep massive forest. A beautiful lake right here. I know where I'm gonna be bathing. I'm gonna to try to get you guys down closer by this water. It's actually very clear. Look at this. You can see we do have some fish floating off around here on the side. It's almost like uh, Bob Ross kind of painted this in the, you know. You guys remember watching that show when you guys were sick and you had to stay home and the only good show was on was uh, Bob Ross painting. <laughs> I either had to watch that or uh, Bob Barker, The Price is Right. And good old sick days. Uh, I'm gonna do some sort of a, like a lane two super shelter. And then uh, hopefully the next few days I can get actually up above, up in the trees and get my main shelter going up there. I'm gonna take my long piece of paracord here. Bring this all the way around. Oh yeah, perfect. You're not gonna beat me yet, Wisconsin. There we go. All right, you guys, day one uh, didn't go as planned. My shelter's still under uh, construction right now. Uh, so I am, I'm, I'm in here in Mark's uh, Rolling Homestead Wild Edibles. I'm in his shelter for the night. Uh, I do have my coat on, but if I take off my wool blanket, you can see I do have my, uh, my festive joggers and uh, just a wool blanket. And it's about five degrees tonight, so, um, it's gonna get cold, that's why I'm leaving my coat on. And uh, no sleeping bag, no sleeping pad. Uh, the ground is hard, this is gonna suck, but, uh, you know, at least I have a shelter for tonight, so. What's going on, guys? It is officially day two, and it's freezing cold. Uh, my hands are just numb. Everything is numb. I ended up sleeping with my emergency baby last night. And uh, I am just frozen. Actually, the baby had so much condensation in it that it just soaked my entire clothes. So I need to get a nice big roaring fire going. There you guys go. This is what I was 
uh, lighting. These are the fire bites by Black and White Fire Starter. But big thank you, big shout out to Paul Corona at Black and White Fire Starters for sponsoring this video. Alright, so I guess this is going to be my official uh, good morning. Uh, I probably woke up about an hour ago, just freezing cold. I had the emergency bivy on. I was uh, just soaking wet from all the condensation inside that, that bivy. Beautiful. I'm alive. I made it. I mean, it actually did pretty well. As you guys can see, it just cut that bacon right in half. So that's, that's a good sign. So he hooked us up with a air rifle. I have all the, the specs on this. I will uh, I'll have them down on the bottom. This right here is a, a new uh, trap system that he came up with. This is made out of super light aluminum. Trip it, it would fall down. Your heavy object would come down. So uh, for all you guys that struggle with the, the figure four or some kind of deadfall trap, uh, these are gonna come really handy. So here we go. Ooh, that's nice. She does got a little kick to her, huh? All right, you guys have been seeing me use a lot of that silky saw. Uh, that part of that 12 item kit is this little Ozark hatchet. I don't think this is going to do the job, but we're going to go ahead and try it out anyways and see. I could be wrong. There you guys go. I don't know if you guys can tell. Oh, there's a little bit of water left in there, but that's all ice. All ice. And uh, like I said, you know, I'm out here in my hoodie, but my, uh, my water bottle here is just completely frozen. Frozen water. So if I was a smart guy, I'd put this in my hoodie as I go around and get my daily uh, camp tours done and working on my shelter here. Uh, but nothing's there's no fun about carrying around a big old brick of ice and what? <laughs> I just said goodbye my got this American Justin both got the uh, the wall up around the fire so we don't have to deal with the smoke tonight there we go just like that what was that two three strikes and we got nice fire going especially in this cold weather absolutely love it we got 
Except for a piece. Yeah. And they're frozen, so they'll last a good while before they... Uh... Me. Yeah, there we go. Let's see how many cameras I can get in one shot. There's <laughs> there's three of them right there. <laughs> you got Tyler Wood guys, so go over and check out Tyler Wood. He is the chef tonight. I made breakfast. And he's making us some kind of <laughs> my eyes are watering by this fire a little bit. Mark's doing his blog. I'm interrupting, ain't I? <laughs> <laughs> Mark's filming me, I'm filming him. <laughs> we have our delicious steak de Burgo right here. Yeah, that's the good stuff. So we're gonna eat like kings tonight, or not the peasants. Lord, thank you for this food. Please keep us safe on this journey. Amen. <laughs> go little overdone but that's okay for this recipe for steak de burgo it doesn't matter how you cook the steak it's gonna taste good in bed oh. negative uh, what is it negative 24 degrees out tonight this is gonna be harsh it's gonna be cold I'm gonna put my hoodie up and just kind of wrap myself around this I'm even going to try without using the wool blanket that I got from Walmart so this is going to be this is gonna be something else as you can see it's already getting cold my breath is already let me see Here's the, the roof. Here's the back side of my wall getting built along with the roof. So I will see you guys tonight. Hopefully I don't wake up in freezing cold. Thank goodness for black and white fire service because it is
harvest the fire. That's my shelter right there. Definitely need to get that thing going. Get it finished last night. So. see me it's still pretty dark out it's like six or five somewhere around that five or six in the morning so need to uh get a nice warm fire going get all warmed up fusco for the good times yeah <laughs> different types. Uh, which one is this, Justin? That's an Ethiopian Yergesha light roast. What he just said. So, big thanks to them. Uh, this is definitely going to keep us warm. As you can see, I got a lot of frost in my beard. It is freezing cold. My hands, they don't really want to work all all that well right now because it's just freezing cold out and spilled coffee on me. So, when it starts getting warmed up, and I can uh, start building on the shelter. So, catch you guys later. Hey, welcome back to Old Toboggan. We got my Hidden Woodsman pack on, and the Walmart challenge is over. And I'll tell you guys why at the end of this episode. You ain't gonna wanna miss this. Some really crazy stuff went on. I owe a huge shout out to Mark with Rolling Homestead Wild Edibles. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put those pine boughs down as our flooring. We're gonna add a few more other things, but I wanna go ahead and put all that pine bough that I have on now and get a good idea on how much I need, how much more I need, if I need more or, or if what I have is enough. Uh, I, went, I went down to, the, uh, to that beautiful lake down there to get some uh, sand and, and try to make some sort of a little fire pit inside, but uh, it was so frozen and the only sand I can get to is pretty deep out there. And I'd, with it being negative 15 degrees today, I'm not gonna risk, you know, trying to get in there to get some sand for fire pit. So I'm using that Walmart pot that I have. You see there's a nice little fire going in there. I just kinda wanna see how it's gonna work out. I'm gonna close everything up and open up a bin on top and see if that hot heat will push that smoke directly up into that hole that I'm gonna make. Pine bed. nice bed of pine boughs to lay on hopefully that's going to be well we're probably going to need a little bit more but my main goal is trying to keep that cold draft that comes up from underneath and sinking through it to, to try to chill me out so i'm trying to get in my permanent shelter you want to tell us what you're working on wood lots and lots of wood I spent most of the day collecting all these pine boughs. I went down and harvested a, uh, a pine tree. It was a cedar pine. So even though this looks like a whole lot of pine boughs here, it's still not going to be enough to keep that cold draft from underneath. So what I'm going to do is use my wooby blanket to lay, lay it down over on top of that. And then of course the wool blanket, then my sleeping bag.
I'm finally here. I got my shelter done for the most part. I got my tarp all wrapped around. I got all my stuff inside, made it real nice and cozy in there. I've been gla uh, gathering up some firewood for the uh, the little fire that we're going to have in there to get things warmed up throughout the night. Temperatures will be back in the uh, zero to below zero range. So I will, uh, let's go ahead and take you guys inside. We'll do like a bushcraft cribs uh, little series real quick. So. I uh, had to do a reshot here. I had already opened it because I thought I had audio on, but it's not. Yeah, my beard is just frosted over. That's what happens. Uh, it is going to get below freezing temperatures tonight. Uh, when you guys see me, it'll be morning. And uh, hopefully I won't be freezing in the middle of the night. So I'm going to hunker down, call it a night. So we'll see you guys. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but I hear wolves, and I heard tracking, and they sound close. Hey guys, so I got my boots right next to my pan. is harder than the cast iron pan. One more time. How hard is that? <laughs> the egg the egg is harder than the cast iron pan. Didn't even break the shell. Alright you guys, I got my bag. I got my rifle with me. I got my tripod, my main camera, and we're gonna go exploring. It's been absolutely brutal out here, but at the same time, it's been absolutely beautiful out here. Like a bird on a tree, I'm just sitting here. I got time, it's clear to see From up here, the world seems small We can sit together, it's so beautiful And 
to be in the great outdoors forever free you and me meant to be in the great outdoors forever Two hundred likes on this video, I'll show you what's hiding in that den. All right, you guys, we have our fire. It is nice and warm in here. For the first time in a while, I finally feel nice and warm. So um, I took a lot of precautions in doing this. I would not recommend this unless you absolutely are positive you know what you're doing because you don't want to burn down your, I mean, we are like six feet off the ground right now up in the tree. So uh, this is absolutely just totally amazing. I got, I took my emergency bivy up here on top and uh as you can see that from up there um it's it's reflecting the heat right back down on me it's gonna hit hit my sleeping bags up it's gonna keep me warm and uh this might be the first night where i don't wake up at one two o'clock in the morning just shivering freezing cold trying to get a fire going walking around keeping my blood circulated this is a, a major accomplishment this has definitely boosted up my uh my energy now i don't even know if i'll be able to sleep knowing that uh i got a nice nice hot fire going so uh all right I'll, I'll i'll tell you guys the story you guys have all been waiting for i saw a little bit more wood on the uh the fire here all right you guys as i promised at the night of day two sleeping in my hammock in the shelter that i have now but no source of heat, no sleeping bag. It was absolutely brutal. I fell asleep for about an hour, hour and a half. Everyone was asleep. I woke up freezing cold. I couldn't feel my feet. I couldn't feel my, my fingers. I was in uh, pre-hypothermia. Um, I was jogging and running up and down, up and down, trying to get my, my, uh, I got a fire going first. I remember that. And, I, and as, as I got the fire going, and I want to give a big shout out to Black and White Fire Starters because if I didn't have, uh, one of their fire starters with me, I, I you know, I could be in the hospital. It could be way worse. But, uh, I got a fire going. Uh, it, it, even with as quick as, I mean, one strike and, you know, one flick of a, a lighter and you have fire. And even though it was so easy to do that, I, I was struggling. My hands were shaking so much I couldn't line the fire starter in my Bic lighter up to, uh, get a fire going. It was just absolutely horrible. And, uh, once I finally got that managed, uh... As the fire and the kindling and getting the big logs on, I would, I would jog back and forth all throughout the night, getting the fire going and stand by the fire. Uh, day one, I slept in Mark's cabin. Uh, I just had a rough start getting my shelter done. 
But now that my shelter is finally completed and I'm able to sleep in, in it on day four, I am so thankful. I, I did not intend it to uh, take this long to build my shelter, but when you're walking through four feet of snow and hauling up, you know, 30, 40 plus feet high trees to build your shelter, and trying to stay warm and eat, it's just there's not enough time in a day to, to do uh, the shelter. There's not enough, you, you can't do this in one day. Um, but after, back to the story, after I, uh, I, I, even with the fire, even keeping my, my body circulated, my, my feet were just hurting. I mean, they were hurting, but I didn't feel it. And uh, I got in Mark's uh, little cabin. And Justin came in there. Mark came. Mark woke up. Justin came in there, and uh, they 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 got a fire going inside their cabin to uh, uh, warm me up. And it took. I was probably in there for about four to five hours, sitting there warming up. I actually had my my feet right on Mark's little wood burning stove that he has in his cabin. I had my feet directly on it, and I couldn't feel it. And he's like, "Hey, your foot is on there. That's gonna hurt." And I was like. What are you talking about he's uh, I looked down and yeah my foot's right on the uh, the wood burning stove and I didn't feel it so, uh, I took my sock off uh, I didn't have bare skin on the the wood burning stove just FYI I had my wool socks on but I, I took my sock off and I'm looking and I got a goose egg that's all black right around where my ankle the ankle bone is uh, my ankle was really skinny, which was weird. I never seen that before. But the heel, the the bottom of my heel was uh, puffy and really like really big and puffy. And uh, this this all happened uh, start of night two, uh, into day three. I didn't feel my feet at all. Walking around, building my shelter, I couldn't feel my feet. I wasn't in I wasn't in pain, but I know since I couldn't feel them that it probably wasn't good. Um, it was. It was the closest I've ever got to going into full hypothermia. Uh, so I, like I said, I owe Mark with Rolling Home Said Wild Edibles and Justin Van Ferrari with Waypoint Outdoor Adventures a, a huge, uh, I owe them huge. You know, I, I owe them my life because, you know, if they didn't uh, get up and check on me and I would have fell asleep, you know, there, there's no telling what could happen. So I, uh, I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart because... Uh, you know, I have a wife and I have a daughter to get back to. And, uh, that leads me to my second story for the night. You guys are going to get a bonus. Because, uh, I forgot to tell story night yesterday. Uh, being out here in this freezing cold, uh, some of the challenges that you run across is obviously if you have a beard, it's all icy. You can see I got ice, real nasty. Um, that, that, that sucks. Uh, ice on the mustache and you try to pick it off and it pulls your your, your uh, mustache beard that hurts um, another thing too uh, you know walking through four or five feet of snow you, we pack Mark and, and Justin have snowshoes and they pack it down a little bit but every once in a while well, more than once in a while, you'll you'll step in and you'll be up to your waist in snow because they they their snowfall up here is just absolutely absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so you know, collecting trees and pines and all that stuff, everything that we need to thrive out here is a challenge. Uh, that's that's some of the hard stuff. You know, only eating once a day compared to at home. You guys all know me; I'm a snacker. I love my snacks. You know. So, uh, you know, not having my stacks really, uh, that, that's a bummer. But uh, last but certainly not least, the hardest thing is, uh, you know, missing your family. Um, my wife, my beautiful daughter, uh, she, uh, she is so smart for her age. Uh, she 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 already knows sign language for the most part like the real simple common stuff she knows the sign language for more and uh she will uh drink her 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 uh juice or water and uh she'll she'll do this sign for for more and she'll say more more and uh you know 
there'd be some times I'd be on the couch and I'd just be like, oh man, I just filled the cup up, you know, um, and, uh, not that it was a bother or anything like that, you know, just, uh, stuff like that, that's what I miss, you know, uh, I miss her little voice where she's, uh, walking around saying more, more, you know, it's, I miss that girl so much, they're always saying da 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 da, um, yeah, I, I, I miss them. I miss my wife telling me about her day, asking how mine is. I uh I miss I miss them so much. The only thing I'm looking forward to is uh going home and seeing them because they are my rock, you know. They are absolutely everything to me. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see her. I can't wait for my little girl to come, you know, running to the run to the door as soon as I get in and give me a hug because I miss her so much. You know, I feel like she's the, the only thing that I, uh, I I can be really proud of and that uh, I did. So, um, that's that's my story for the night, guys. Uh, it's, it's getting late. Uh, I need to get some more fire going in my little bushcraft fire pit and, uh, get some sleep because day five tomorrow it's going to be a heat wave it's going to be like 20 degrees tomorrow and that's fahrenheit that's not celsius so uh it's going to be a heat wave for us because we've been so down the the zero and below zero digits that it's been absolutely crazy so uh we're gonna go air rifle hunting tomorrow this is what it looks like around 6 30 this morning so um, once the guys get up, we'll all get up and get stuff going. Alright. So yeah, you guys can see my breath. It is a little chilly now that I'm actually all out of my sleeping bag. Still have a few jackets on. <laughs> Because it was a chilly night, but I stayed quite warm, and I am very pleased with the way the shelter turned out. So, time to get the old boots, get those on the feet, get all nice and warmed up. I am up, and it's time to uh, bring you guys along with with me as we uh, head out. Oh, we need our gloves. The tripod is quite cold, so I need to crawl back. Crawl back up in here. Oh, this is gonna be a shaky morning. So see the breath. Yeah, I woke up about every hour and stoke up the fire. Sounds like they had a uh, a rough night. It sounds like my first uh, three nights out here. Let me uh, get my door up and going. Woo! Here we are. I emerged. <laughs> I slept like a baby last night. I got up one time for nature and a second time to redo the fire, but other than that, wow. I got a probably good eight hours of sleep, so. We well, you know who's doing all the work today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I feel a million times better. I feel like a whole new person rejuvenated, you know. I heard you guys talking about getting a fire going, so. I couldn't wait for some of that delicious and Pisco coffee. You just dump a little bit out right here, just like that. We hardly use any. That'll be enough to get our fire going. And uh, I should have brought my ferro rod out, but I didn't. But I have my uh, handy dandy emergency Bic lighter. I'm just gonna get that fire going just like that. Put some of these logs. Oh, look at that. Log went right on that fire. Didn't even put it out. Uh, Alright, you guys. So we have. Oh, let me get a nice little, little promo picture there. Now it makes it. There, there we go. So now we got our. Both our snowshoes are finally done. I've been saying I've been wanting to do this since the day I got out here. I finally got them done. Hopefully they're going to work. I definitely rushed it, but I think 
I think it all shall be good. Had that fun joking around. Yep. Yeah, it's right. just been crazy. Lord, thank you for this food that we're about to eat. May it nourish our bodies. Thank you for keeping us safe throughout this whole seven day challenge. And thank you for the, the keeping us calm with each other and at peace and humble and kind. Bless those that are in need, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 It's been a blast. We've we've had a lot of talks, you know, off camera. Uh, when it's not so busy, uh, you don't see us really talk a whole lot throughout the days, uh, especially those first three, four days, because we were just constantly battling freezing cold temperatures and trying to get our shelters done, trying to get to the point where we can lay in them and be in them and be comfortable. Um, last few nights, I have been very comfortable in my shelter. I've got a fire going inside this lifted, suspended cabin. I mean, this is a true super shelter. I've got mylar all over the top up here. I've got my main flashlight hanging above, which doesn't really do much, so I'm holding this little guy. Um, you know, this is just, this has been such an awesome learning experience, you know, learning and watching other YouTubers do their own thing out here. Uh, you know, seeing how everyone works, uh, how everyone uh, does their camera work. It's just been an awesome experience. I'm very honored, very blessed to be out here and be able to do this with all of them. So it's taking a toll on our body. Um, everything we do takes 10 times longer in a cold. And then you add filming on top of that. It's just absolutely crazy. There's only one thing that's missing. That's the family. You know, I miss my family tremendously. I can't wait to see my girls, can't wait to go hug her, and, you know, she, missing family sucks, so, alright, off to bed, tomorrow's a big day, so, I'll catch you guys in the morning. Good morning, uh, it is day six. Um, last night slept pretty good and I didn't wake up at all throughout the whole entire night. I had a fire going when I went to bed. I woke up this morning, it was 6.30, so we got a fire going, get nice and warmed up, read some of the Bible and wait for the other guys to get up, so... knife I'm actually making a, a spoon right here and uh, I just rip it away I don't know if you can get let me see if I can get that on focus there we go maybe some really nice feather feathers as if I'm doing like a feather stick and I'm just trying to carve it into shape thought I'd share that I haven't been really recording me doing this project because it's pretty early in the morning I'll wake the guys up There's some more. So there you guys go. There's some uh, some more I've been working on. I'm trying to get this handle down. That first little batch right here. I don't know if you can see that. Just absolutely beautiful. Alright, to uh, my veins, I'm going to try doing a 
uh, burn bowl into the spoon that I made. All I do is take a nice hot coal and give it, uh, just blow on a little bit so it'll start to heat up. spot to uh you know for a spoon to dip it go you can see it's starting to work we got a nice little divot I've been so focused on doing this project over here that I forgot all about coffee so uh, Let's get some coffee. And Pisco. Thanks for the sponsorship. Enjoying the mug, enjoying the coffee. We're on this project, a cold windy morning. I uh, just sit, just gonna take a quick break and have my morning Joe. That's good. That's the good stuff. Stop. So Tyler, you go first. And now it doesn't matter what you look like, it just matters where you hit.
Tyler, you get one more shot. Was that a good one? I hope so. Well, I'm going to go slow motion. Tyler. All right, so here's Tyler. Tyler. Alright, All right, up next is Mark. Alright, All right, up next is Mark. I see some big fish jumping. Here's that beautiful hidden lake back here. In the Cedar Swamp, guys. You guys won't believe how clear and beautiful this natural spring fed water is. It's actually a hot spring, I think is what Mark was saying. Mark at Rolling Homestead Wild Edibles. But I mean, my goodness, guys. Uh, the scenery over here is just absolutely beautiful that it won't record with. Look at that. this work I got you tied off to some bank line I want you guys to go check how the fish are doing for me I think they're trout I'm gonna throw this thing and, and hope and pray that the, my knots don't come undone because this is this is some sketchy stuff let me tell you all right ready one two three I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me meant to be in the great outdoors.
little shovel. But tonight, we're going to be having squirrel venison stew. So Justin had harvested up some uh, two black squirrels. And we got some stew with some venison I chopped up earlier. And uh, we got some homemade jerky still going on here. Got our roaring fire. It is day, it is night six. It is the night time of day six. And uh, we are having our last dinner around the campfire. We're gonna, we're gonna eat and then we're going to, well, I'm gonna call in bed. Hopefully sleep like a baby tonight, wake up in the morning. And uh, end this challenge on day seven, this extreme cold winter seven day challenge in northwestern Wisconsin. It has been a roller coaster, let me tell you guys. All right, you guys, I forgot my plate in my cabin, so instead of walking all the way over there, there was some uh, poplar, if that's how you guys say it here in northern Wisconsin. And uh, I went ahead and jimmy up a bushcraft plate because. I think it looks a little bit more fitting and it's uh, one last little project I can knock out real quick before our seven day challenge is over. We're going to be having some scroll and venison soup. That sounds delicious. We got a nice roaring fire going. Chilling with Waypoint Outdoor Adventures. That's Justin Van Ferrari and we have Mark with Rolling Homestead Wild Edibles. And what are you doing Mark? Making a spool. Making a spoon. Why are you making a spoon? Because if you want to eat, you got to have a spoon, don't you? Well, that's the polite thing to do, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right, so there's our black squirrel and venison stew that we got going on. I'm, uh, I got the bushcraft plate right here. And I got my bushcraft spoon. And we're going to go ahead and dig in and get ourselves a nice little dinner going. Got a little looks like a little squirrel bone leg right here. Delicious. And some of a little bit of everything mixed in there. So I'm gonna have to take in multiple plates because I can't fit a whole lot without it getting all over the I place. Don't, I don't think you got a squirrel in there. Oh yeah. yeah. Right here. It actually kind of fell apart a little bit. Nice. Yeah. Dear Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for the scroll that you provided along with the venison. Please keep us safe tonight as we wrap up our seven day extreme winter challenge. I want to thank Justin and Mark for allowing me to be part of this adventure. And uh, I wish them and all of our subscribers and family back home a very safe and blessed night. Amen. 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 Thank you. Oh yeah, that squirrel's fairly tender. Oh. Okay, let Surprisingly me see. tender. Let me see your uh, pole feel there, Will, Tyler. Getting hungry, guys. Oh, I forgot to clean the poop sack out. <laughs> I was wondering what that little taste was. Alright, there we go. Is the squirrel? Actually, the squirrel is falling off the bone. Not squirrel on a stick. Good night, Mark. Good night, Justin. Good night, Justin.
Alright you guys, uh, we are at the end of day 6, tomorrow's day 7, we are going to be packing up and heading out, hopefully get a nice hot meal, and uh, wrap it up, make sure we got all of our footage right, and then uh, saying our goodbyes, and heading back home to family, family is the one thing I've been missing the most out here. It's the one thing that's been the hardest to uh, deal with is being gone from the family. So, um, my thoughts for the day, I just can't wait to see my baby girl. Can't wait to see my wife. Uh, this was an adventure. This was a challenge. Dealing with this cold weather, it's uh, it's been something. So, I, <clears throat> I just want to say thank you if you guys are just now watching. Definitely go back and check through all of the other six episodes, the other six days. Um, not just my channel. Check out Justin Waypoint Outdoor Adventures. Check out Mark with Rolling Homestead Wild Edibles. All the links in the description are going to be down below. And make sure that you are saying I'm watching every episode to be entered into the massive giveaway. So stay tuned after the series to see what the giveaway is. I know, I know something. Well, obviously I know. I know there will be some black and white fire starter giveaway. There will be uh, a knife giveaway. And there'll be a few other things, so you don't want to miss it. Make sure you're like, you're liking every video. You're commenting that I'm watching every video, and you're subscribed, and you're sharing the videos out. That's it. Plain and simple. I hope you guys enjoyed this adventure, and uh, I will see you guys in the morning. Well, here's my good morning for the last day. Day 7 is finally here. It is pack up and uh, get everything cleaned up and, and head out day. I got my one last fire and I'll show you guys. I don't think I've really showed you guys how I got in a fire in here before. So I'm just using two pots. And uh, that's my fire system. So good morning, day seven. Time to pack up and, and head home. I'm so nice and warm in, in my uh, sleeping bag here that I don't want to get out, but gotta get up, gotta get the day going, right? So I'll catch you guys later. You know, I never look forward to going to work until after these seven days of being out here in the cold and that being a controlled environment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't get everything done on the shelter I wanted to get done. But the structure's there, the bones are there, I think, for whoever comes out next. Yeah. They definitely want to get a 10 by 12 tarp. Redo that. I don't think that's going to last for it. Is that thing percolating or? Oh, yeah. You got gloves on? I'll do a little test. See how dark it is. It's drinkable, but it's still pretty clear. I can see I can see the bottom of my cup through the. Well, the good news is, is out of these seven days, everybody made it. Yeah. No one died. Well, that fourth guy that was with us, I mean. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's four shelters. There's only three of us sitting around the fire. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. well, that's not even hardly coffee. No, It'll I'm... wet my whistle, though. No, it's Parker. Forever free.
take a step back to see the truth around you from a distance you can tell We are finally leaving camp and uh, oh Is that a sled I see? Is that a sled going right downhill? All right, you guys you know what to do hundred likes and I'll ride that sled all the way home Back to Iowa. Can we get a hundred likes on this? What do you think mark? Kind of funny kind of funny Justin. Yeah All right, here it is back home and see the little one and just have a fun fun day with the family and all that good stuff I can't wait my daughter watches Sesame Street every night and uh, I, I, I as much as I hate it watching that thing every single day I'm actually looking forward to it you guys can see that stream down there that nice river flowing absolutely beautiful we are on our way to the vehicles well down there let me zoom in for you guys absolutely beautiful all the way around here walk and trek up through the roaring river no i'm just kidding it's so beautiful out here seven days seven days gone from the family Seven days away from cell phone service, all notifications, all that crazy stuff. And uh, let me just take you guys down here for a second. Let me show you the, the beauty. Wow, look at this. We found gold. This is nice. All right, you guys, we found our, we found the gold mine. We've been searching for the gold. Here it is. Don't tell anyone about it. And uh, I'll show you guys what this is all worth when it's all said and done. Right. I got a camera, sh camera show down here. Yeah. <laughs> nice and easy, boys. Nice and easy. <laughs>
There we go. Absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna remember this place for for a very long time. Um, uh oh, looks like Mark's stuck now. This is also sponsored by Dodge. There he goes. That thing got to hear me? Got to hear me in a big one. <laughs> you want to lead us in prayer? Mm-hmm. Lord, thank you for getting us home safe and bless this food so it nourishes our body. And take, thank you for being so patient and kind with us and being the Lord and Savior that you are. Thank you for dying for us on the cross and forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. All Shut right. Down. Dig in. Do you guys check that footage out? This is just absolutely crazy. Remember that time? <laughs> yep, that's back when I couldn't feel my toes. Justin's moving slow in motion there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even have my uh my pulls up for my cabin or anything. I love the, the fact that we all kind of stand back away from our shelter and kind of absorb the situation, <laughs> kind of it's map a, it out in our head. Yeah, it's like uh, you don't have architectural plans or anything, so you're just kind of like <clears throat> going with the flow. Mm -hmm. The cold. It was brutal. I will definitely do it again, just not anytime soon. <laughs> I'm thinking next time, somewhere nice and warm. Extreme winter challenge, nice and warm? Yeah. Alpino's got a was, uh, I think it hit, th they said it was 31 below, 25 or 31 below. Yeah, yep. That's what I shoot for. I shoot for a lot of those little filler shots. You see all this same footage that we're looking at right now. Go check on Waypoint Outdoors and Waypoint Outdoor Adventures. Justin and Tyler with Hollywood Bushcraft. And don't forget, Mark, with Rolling Homestead Wild Edibles. I know you just heard that, but Justin Van Ferrari with Out or Waypoint. Check out Justin with Waypoint Outdoor Adventures. And uh, this is an awesome series, guys. If you want to see what we're looking at, you gotta make sure you check out the seven day winter challenge, extreme winter challenge. Hey, if you wanna see what we're looking at, you gotta make sure to check out the uh, seven day extreme winter challenge in northern Wisconsin. We're in Mark with Rolling Homestead in his home territory, and we're out of his bushcraft camp. We did some pretty epic stuff. I wish there was a pizza tree you could just harvest. What do you think of this, how deep the snow is out there? <laughs> mm. I just you know what's funny about this is when me and Justin were down in the swamp. Yeah. We found a wolf track. I mean, right where, right where, I mean, in the direction you said you heard him. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> Dang, you want to talk about your nerves just being on, on edge. Especially in the dark, you're out there all alone. like. Yeah, you're, we're on the other spot. You guys are on the other side of huh? the woods there. <laughs> the road, I might release a full project build where, uh, where you know, it's just strictly that one project. You can see it from start to finish. Um, and me and Tyler were thinking about doing some kind of the silent ones where, you know, and you know doing that kind of thing and just out there and just hearing the you know some of the crackling from the branches and you know that's when you know it's, it's cold is when you snap a branch and that thing echoes all the way across the whole woods yeah or you just hear the trees popping yeah you know i mean they're just frozen literally frozen well i'm not 100 percent convinced it was just trees popping at the middle of night it sounded more like a knock <laughs> 
Yeah, so there was a couple times you wondered. Yeah. Because it just it wasn't just one knock; it was a knock and then another somewhere else, another knock. Yep. And they happened pretty pretty close together. So. Hey, Jess, good to see you, Jesse Cox. Hey, good guys. <laughs> You'd watch all three hours. Well, maybe I'll do it just for you. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's gonna watch three hours? Yeah, it, happy little. There is gonna be so Andy much. Started. There's so much awesome footage. So much. Uh, the one thing that I really wish I could have captured on, on film that I didn't is, uh, I think it was day four. It was like when I started feeling really good about everything that I had going on, there was a massive bald eagle that just came flying right over top of me. And it was the one time I went down to the swamp area to, to harvest a tree. I already had enough filming of, uh, of cutting, using my saw, using my axe. I didn't want to take all my camera gear down there because it's such a, a, a trike through the snow to get down there. And carrying a, my big old camera and a tree on my shoulder, I just didn't want to do that. So I left all my camera gear there because, I, like I said, I had enough of that recording done. You guys don't want to see, you know, all seven videos, two hours of just cutting down trees. So I left my camera back at camp. And this massive bald eagle comes flying over my head, right up above, right, kind of right by our camp, but just off to the distance a little bit. And uh, it was in perfect shot of being able to get a nice, good video of it, but I didn't have my camera, so that was one thing I regret not recording. Homestead Remembrance, we are up north, so. We are far north. <laughs> It's some of the things, you know, like the, the stories you're going to hear of the, 